new book, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries by Davin de Kergamo and Blair Phillips. Is this a must-buy? Stay tuned for the Whiskey Whistle. Hello, my whiskey people. Mark here at Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you a book review, an awesome book review of Canadian distilleries. This comes from Davin de Kergamo, the acclaimed author and whiskey expert, and Blair Phillips, who is the Canadian contributor to the Whiskey Magazine. So this is the definitive guide to Canadian distilleries, just launched today, in fact. This is March 31st. So fantastic to have this. Well, a big thank you to Davin for sending this to me. So this is just awesome. And I have to say, so far of the books of his that I've been able to get and read, this is my absolute favorite. Now, one thing that's kind of funny, they have gone from being very much a pocket book that you could fit in your back pocket. Well, nearly. So that was one of his, I think that was his first edition, Canadian Whiskey, The Portable Expert. And then a couple of years after that, he released a slightly larger Canadian Whiskey Portable Expert, I guess the second edition. And that is, well, it will not fit in your pocket. So a little bit bigger. And now even bigger still, this one will have to go in a bag because it's huge. And that is this gorgeous new book, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. Absolutely, this is a must buy if you're into Canadian whiskey. In fact, if you're into whiskey period, and you're somewhere in the world and you need a book about Canadian whiskey and Canadian distilleries, this is gonna be it. First of all, the two authors, again, Davin de Kergamo, also Blair Phillips. Let me just read a little bit about them, okay? So Davin de Kergamo is a drinks writer, public speaker, and spirits judge who is recognized as the world's expert on Canadian whiskey. He's been named one of the 50 most influential Canadians in food and drink by the Globe and Mail, and the New York Times said his significance in the revival of Canadian whiskey could not be overstated. He lives in Ottawa with his wife and Lassa Apo Pup. Cute. <laughs> All right, and Blair Phillips, I have not met him, but hopefully soon. Blair Phillips is the Canadian contributing editor to Whiskey Magazine, writes for the popular distiller app, and has contributed features for drinksmadeeasy.com. He judges several spirits competitions, including the World Whiskey Awards and Canadian Whiskey Awards. Hmm. How about, uh, <laughs> okay. He lives in Toronto with his wife and two children, so very cool. So you can find them on Instagram at Davin, D-E-K, Davin, D-E-K. And for Blair Phillips, I think he just started a new Instagram account. It's not listed here, but just search his name and you'll find it. He should be near the top of the results. So this comes from Appetite by Random House. Gorgeous book. I love the color. That's uh, almost the same color as the Whiskey Whistle logo, isn't it? Very cool. Now, just getting over a cold, and no, it's not coronavirus, but let me just uh, soothe my throat with this Shelter Point. Mmm. Shelter Point Single Malt, one of my favorites. Two Brewers Single Malt, one of my favorites. Lots of my favorites here. Of course, we won't be reading the whole book here, but there are a couple of things that I want to point out for you that make this really exciting for me. The first is in the intro, and this talks about these two gentlemen and how they came to pen this book. The idea for this book began to take shape while we were traveling across Canada, writing a travel and whiskey adventure series. Entering crowded tasting rooms from Eau Claire Distillery in Turner Valley, Alberta, to Forty Creek Distillery in Grimsby, Ontario, showed just how popular drinking local is becoming. As we've gotten to know some of these distilleries, we realized each has a unique product and a story that needs to be told, and thus this guide was born. So how awesome is that? And I have to say that I believe that I even had a, a slight influence on, on Davin de Kergamo taking him to our local distillery here, which, uh, which is called Patent 5. So I took him there to the distillery and we had lunch with, uh, with the owner, Brock Coots, and um, the two of them just talked at length about the industry and what type of whiskey Patent 5 should be making. So that was really interesting to, to listen in on and to just offer my own two cents here and there. Again, I need some more tonic for this, uh, this cold ravaged throat of mine. Cheers, and I hope you're well practicing safe social distancing at home, reading a book, enjoying some elegantly, excellently made spirits, 
Cheers, everybody. Mm. Delicious single malt. The next thing that I wanted to share are just about some of my favorite distilleries that are featured here. Amongst all of the other amazing distilleries that are in this book, the few that really shine out to me that I want to point out um, are Shelter Point. Whoops, there's my place mark. Shelter Point Distillery. So a fantastic photo of uh, Jacob Weeb and mm, there must be Leon Webb, I believe, the head distiller. So really awesome. They make some fantastic whiskey and one of them ended up being my Canadian Single Malt Whiskey of the Year winner, which was awesome, um, in a tie with two brewers. So that's why these are right here next to me. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway, so you can read about them and they tell you about how these how they started and about their amazing farm So this is a farm distillery and then a few pages later we go up to the Yukon and this is one of the Distilleries that I've had the longest relationship with both personally and also um, here on the channel and That is Yukon brewing So Yukon brewing Yukon Yukon spirits in fact is their distillery, but the whole facility is Yukon brewing and they make this very, very amazing two brewers single malt scotch whiskey amongst other spirits. And interestingly, these are brewers, brewers who became distillers. This was a farm that became distilling. And that brings me to my next point and another awesome thing that's located in this book. Oh, there it is on page 58. And that is the six breeds of distiller. So the person, how do these people get into distilling whiskey, distilling spirits in Canada? This talks about six different ways, six different avenues in Canada that people find themselves becoming distillers. So the first breed starts as the flavorist, someone who comes from cooking or from being a mixologist, etc. They're coming from the point of view of flavor and they're falling in love with spirits and they start distilling so very cool and then we have the scientist so this is someone who comes from well obviously a scientific background they get a degree they go and study about brewing and distilling and one of those is the next person we'll talk about in this book and then we have the brewer like two brewers so they they come from brewing and this is very common there's a lot of breweries that are now distilling their spirits not just in Canada but worldwide we have the farmer like shelter point and then we have the investor. So these are people that decide, hmm, I think there's money to be made in making distilled spirits in Canada. So that's how they come into this line of, uh, of business. And then we have the midlife retiree. And I, I think I think I can say that that uh, very much embodies Brock Coots, who's just a little bit older than me, who came from uh, from a different career, fell in love with whiskey and decided he wanted to make it himself. So, and he's doing some cool things over there. So that's another part of the book that I really love is this idea of how do people get into distilling? What about you? Where are you gonna fit in when you start getting into distilling whiskey? Then the next thing that's really awesome about this book is I guess one of the legends, one of the Canadian legends in distilling. And he works in Ontario. And I've met him a couple of times and I'm really excited to go and spend some time with him as soon as I can. And where are you? There you are. And that is a whole section on Don Livermore. Don Livermore is the master distiller and blender for Corby Wine and Spirits. Corby Spirit and Wine. And they make things like this Guterham and Warts and what else do they make they make things like wiser's 23 this is another canadian whiskey of the year winner for me for 2020 delicious stuff so this is another real highlight for me in this book is how did don livermore dr don how did he get into distilling and how huge is his effect on the distilling scene i think that he would be very much responsible for taking the the big massive distilleries here in Canada and get them aligned thinking about craft and thinking about how to make whiskey better so it started with him another amazing part of this book is the little section on Manitoba which uh, I'll highlight here 
All right, here we go. So we have three distilleries in Manitoba, two of them smaller operating here in Winnipeg. And one of those is Capital K Distillery in Winnipeg. And the second, as I mentioned earlier, was Patton 5 Distillery run by Brock Coots with uh, Capital K being run by Jason Kang or Jason Kang, depending on how you say his name. And the, I guess the biggest, the most famous is the the Gimli Distillery, which makes spirits for Crown Royal. You can see the bottle there at the very front. So Crown Royal's Gimli plant is located in Gimli, a huge operation, one of the biggest distilleries in the world, not 100 kilometers from my house to get there. So very cool. So you can read up about what's going on in Manitoba. And I believe this section will be increased by the time of the next, um, the next, uh, the next printing. Anyway, you can read about every single distillery and what they're making, whether it's whiskey, whether it's gin, whether it's something different, because there's lots of different spirits being made in Canada. There's also a, uh, a nice write-up about, about North America's oldest single malt distillery, and that is the Glenora Inn and Distillery. They've been making their Glen Breton for, oh boy, I think about 25 years now. So pretty incredible, really, really long history of, of making single malt in Canada. Very awesome. At the end of the book, you find something also extremely useful, and that is the distillery checklist. So here you can find out whether or not visitors are welcome and what's made at that particular distillery. So that would be really handy to pack in your suitcase as you go trekking Canada to go and visit all these distilleries. And I think that would be really amazing for a non-professional to actually go and visit every single one of these in a maybe the span of a year or two years traveling coast to coast and visiting every single distillery. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, what a fantastic book and I hope you're gonna grab this one and I think this deserves a book hug. Mm -hmm. All right, and a book kiss. Good job. Excellent work, Davin de Cargamo and Blair Phillips. Congratulations on that book. It is gorgeous and it is amazing cover to cover. It's gonna come in real handy right now because we're all stuck at home doing toot sweet, right? Uh, all right, so make sure you grab that book. There's a link in my description below for you to click to Amazon to grab yourself a copy of this amazing book, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. Don't forget to subscribe to Whiskey Whistle, everybody, and hit the bell above, ding, ding, so you're notified of the future Whiskey Whistles in your email inbox or your notifications on your smart device. And make sure you jump in and join me on Patreon and become part of the Whiskey Whistle crew. Patreon.com backslash Whiskey Whistle. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye now.